Hello TikTokers, I'm Black Bright News on YouTube, aka Dark Shades, and as you know I've been doing a series of videos about narcissism. So today I thought I would do one about narcissism and debt because you know sometimes when you enter into a relationship with someone you don't really know their background and even though you ask them their background are they really going to tell you is anyone really going to say oh i've got this debt or that debt no because it's going to turn you off and especially with narcissists they want to be able to put their best um, front forward so when you're looking at them, they're going to create the best impression. So they're not going likely to say, oh, I've got debt, because you're going to look at them kind of apprehensively. So how does this work? Most narcissists, they um, will go into debt just to keep up appearances. And sometimes if they um, if it's not because of that, they'll get you to co-sign a contract, a finance agreement, most of the times when you see um, people who will put somebody else in debt for their own benefit, they're usually narcissists. So if you get a narcissist who wants you to co-sign for a car, co-sign for a mortgage, anything like that, beware. Really beware. To be honest, I personally wouldn't co-sign for anyone, not even my children. And um, that might sound harsh, but I've seen those programs, Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, where this man, he had co-signed for his son. He had paid off the mortgage on his own home, co-signed for his son, and his son didn't pay the mortgage. And he had to remortgage his own home to pay the debt for the son's debt. Yeah, to pay his son's debt. So it's not a wise thing to do. People get into a position where they need co-signers, it's not good because it means they can't really afford it. They don't have the backative, they don't have the wherewithal to stand up on their own feet and the financial institutions know that. So when you're dealing with um, narcissists and debt, you have to understand that um, you have to be conscious about what you're doing. Now, thank goodness nowadays debt lies with the individual it used to be attached to your home or the home that the person was living in that's not the case anymore it's attached to the individual so you don't have to worry about you know your house having a lien on it or anything like that if you've taken on a narcissist with a loan that's my understanding anyway um, let me just see if there's anything i've forgotten um, I've just put here, narcissists will go into debt to keep up appearances. They will also try to convince a partner to go to take out a loan or a financing contract. Some will enter a relationship in debt and lie that they don't have any and try to coax you to pay it off. And that's like I said from the beginning, you have to be very, very careful. Like you do not know people's background. And a lot of people, I mean, I've asked people if, they're, if they've got any debt. No, 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 I ain't got no debt. A year or so down the line, you find out they do. Let us start coming through your door. Or in, in my case, my door. And I used to be so worried about that when it was attached to the house. But it's not anymore, so that's a relief. Mm -hmm. um, what else is it? Not generous. Oh, yes. Yeah. Narcissists also tend not to be generous with their own money. If they've been given money or if they find money or if they win money, they'll be generous. But if they've worked hard for their money, believe me, you're not going to see a penny of it <laughs> or they'll do it begrudgingly. So, yes. Yeah. So all I've got to say on this one is if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you have to bear in mind that um, you'll probably have to pay the brunt of the bills, the brunt of everything, that they won't be forthcoming in that area, mm -hmm. that if they have debt, you're probably going to end up paying it off and you're going to have to come to some agreement with them rather than them coming to some agreement with a finance company that could end up with them paying even more and that could rest on your head. So <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how you um, siphon this out beforehand. That is the important part. I guess the thing is, is that if a narcissist is trying to woo you, 
they can borrow money, take you out and give you the impression that they're well off. Um, and so you wouldn't really know whether or not they are hard up. Mm -hmm. They could also um, be living somewhere and saying that they own the place when really they don't. I mean, when you think about the aim of a narcissist is to get you on side, they can say and do anything to get you on side. All they're interested in is to creating a, the, the best impression possible to woo you in. And they're masters at love, masters at understanding women. So you, if you're not alert and if you're not... Um, um, I was going to say if you're not desperate if, yeah if you're not alert and if you're desperate you're going to have a tough time um, dealing with a narcissist but if you are alert and you're not desperate you can take your time and you'll find that if you take your time with a narcissist he'll be gone he hasn't got time he needs somebody who's going to give in quickly so you have to make sure that now, from now on, I think if you're entering new relationships, I wouldn't say, oh, I can't be bothered with a man. I don't want another man. I can't trust another man. And all men are this and all men are that. I wouldn't go along that route. But what I would do is take your time. I, there's something to be said about period times and period movies. Because when you saw how long it took for the man to woo the woman and what you found out in that time it was absolutely phenomenal and I think that is where we need to be we need to go back to the time when it, you don't have to jump into relationships quickly you don't have to move in quickly you don't have to get married quickly you don't have to date quickly you build friendships and over six to months to a year, you're still dating. You're still seeing each other occasionally, not, not every day, not every week. For some reason, you get a lot of people who want to see, oh, I need to see you every day. If I don't hear your voice, I can't sleep. And oh, I need to, I need to, I need to see you Saturday, need to see you Sunday. Oh, when you wake up in the morning, please call me. Will you please call me when you, before you go to bed at night? All that, all that crap. That's a sign. You might think if you are someone who hasn't had much love, that this person is so interested in you and they're besotted with you and they're the best thing that you could possibly find but you have to be wary of relationships that are on speed control really really be careful because those are the ones that catch you off guard those are the ones that when they whiz you off your feet you don't have time to think you don't have time to get your 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 thoughts in order you're just going with the tide and thinking, oh, yeah, this is great. Everything is wonderful. Everything is perfect. But normally, when things are too perfect and too good to be true, they usually are. So what my suggestion is from henceforth, if you're in a relationship at the moment, you'll just have to stick with it and see what you can do to safeguard yourself and safeguard your finances and keep yourself safe. But... If you are yet to enter a relationship, like I said, take your time. What is the rush? If there is a rush, you have to, have to ask yourself why. I mean, I, I kind of jump in head first. It's just me. And I, I can't say I normally regret it, but sometimes I think to myself, you know, if I just waited a little bit longer, you know, and sometimes I wonder how long is long enough. So, yeah, I'm still learning myself. And I think we all are. No matter how old we get, we're all still learning. So, but I would say the best advice is to take your time, watch behaviours, monitor, observe, listen. And that should put you on the right track. And, you know, hopefully you'll end up with somebody who's not out to take you for what you've got not out to use you, not out to abuse you, and someone who you can have a friend for life. And that's all we want, someone to love and someone who loves us. And that's all for now. I'm Black Bright.